Samu Dazai is considered one of Japan's preeminent modern novelists. Addicted to painkillers and attempting suicide four times during his life, Dazai tormented himself in every way imaginable in order to write about the human condition. He died when he was only 39. In addition to serious themes, his work had a humorous and melancholic quality that has never ceased to fascinate readers. Even today, more than 60 years after his death, Dazai continues to be popular, especially among young people. Every year on June the 19th, on Dazai's birthday, crowds of young fans gather at his grave to pay their respects. On this edition of Begin Japanology, Osamu Dazai. His works address themes of human suffering and his voice comes through very clearly. Today we'll look at why his works remain so popular. Hello and welcome to Begin Japanology. I'm Peter Barakan. Our subject for today is the author, Osamu Dazai. I'm in Mitaka, which is a western suburb of Tokyo and a place where many authors have lived over the years. And in fact, Dazai himself spent the last nine years of his life here in Mitaka from 1939 to 1948. When he took his life at the age of 39, he had already authored some 150 works, many of which were highly autobiographical first-person narratives, some of which have been translated into as many as 20 different languages. I have some of his better-known works here. Sometimes Dazai is thought of as being a rather depressing author because a lot of his books deal with themes of human suffering and portray scenes of decadence, but in fact a lot of his books have a humorous side to them as well. Let's start off today with a look at Dazai's life and what kind of an author he was. Osamu Dazai was the pen name of Shuji Tsushima. He was born in June 1909 in a small farming village called Kanagi in the Tsugaru region of Aomori Prefecture. This is the house where he was born. Dazai came from a family of wealthy property owners. Their house covered nearly 2,000 square meters and they employed more than 30 servants. Dazai was born the sixth son. Because his father was always busy, and his mother was frail from illness, Dazai did not enjoy much parental affection. Instead, he was cared for by Take, a studious young woman who worked as a nanny at Dazai's home. She taught Dazai to write and often read books to him. To the young Dazai, Take was like a mother. As he approached adolescence, Dazai began to feel contempt for his family's profession. His family lent money to farmers, and when debts were not returned, they would seize rice paddies. Dazai was born in fortunate circumstances, but hated himself for it. Unable to reconcile himself to his reality, he suffered in anguish. Dazai's only escape was reading. He devoured classics, old and new, Japanese and foreign. At the age of 16, Dazai decided that he too would become a writer. One author in particular inspired him. Ryunosuke Akutagawa. Akutagawa published his first work when he was still a student. Exploring such themes as the evils and hypocrisy of man and society, his works were enthusiastically read by young people. When Dazai was 17, he began to admire Akutagawa and adopted him as a model in every way possible. But then came some shocking news. Akutagawa had committed suicide at the age of only 35. Dazai was devastated. He stopped going to school and instead began drinking, using drugs and womanizing. While he was still a university student, Dazai began living with a geisha. 
As a result, his family disowned him. After that, his life fell into further disarray. At age 21, he and another woman vowed to kill themselves by drowning. But only the woman ended up dying, leaving Dazai behind. At the age of 26, in an attempt to escape from his self-destructive lifestyle, Dazai dedicated himself to his dream of becoming an author. His work, Flowers of Buffoonery, was based on his own attempted suicide. It depicts an empty young man who gives himself up to every passion. Flowers of Buffoonery received significant attention in the literary world. Dazai's talent had finally been recognized. At around that time, he was blessed with a unique opportunity. In an effort to discover new talent, a publishing company established Japan's first literary prize, the Akutagawa Prize, named after Ryunosuke Akutagawa. Dazai told himself that winning the prize would be a major first step in his career as an author. He began writing in earnest. In 1935, the nominees for the first Akutagawa Prize were announced. Dazai made the list. But he did not win the award. While his work was praised for its quality, one of the judges criticized Dazai himself for his old nature and attempted suicide. But Dazai now felt he could build a niche in the world of literature. He became utterly focused on winning the Akutagawa Prize and began to concentrate his energy on writing a new work for the second competition. But that year, no prize was awarded. A depressed Dazai started to use painkillers, a habit that eventually became an addiction. But he did get back on his feet. In 1939, at the age of 30, fellow authors who admired his talent introduced him to a woman and they married. That woman was Michiko Ishihara, a history and geography teacher at a girls' school. Married life with Michiko gave Dazai the much-needed emotional stability of a family. It was during this time that he began publishing many outstanding works. The year after he married, Dazai published Run Melos, a work based on the theme of friendship. Its protagonist, Melos, races against time, overcoming temptations and hardships in an effort to save the life of a friend. Based on a story from Greek mythology, the novel is often read in Japanese primary and junior high schools and is well known by readers young and old. Dazai's genius as an author blossomed through the feelings of failure and loss that he had experienced in his personal life. This is a footbridge over a railway track and it was apparently a favorite spot of Dazai's. In fact, there's a photograph here of him coming down off the bridge. It was said to have had a pretty good view back in his day, but if you look at the photograph which was taken in 1947, you can see that there were no buildings around here at all at the time. The concrete steps here and the metal girders haven't changed at all from the day it was built, as you can see. Let's go up and take a look. If you look out over here now, there's this vast expanse of tracks and lots of buildings over in the distance there. But back in Dazai's day, there would have been far fewer tracks and probably no buildings at all. You would have been able to see for quite a long way and it would have been a beautiful, rather rural landscape. And the fact that he liked this place so much leads one to imagine that he probably liked to lean over here and just gaze out into the distance. And I wonder if at times he might have been thinking about the area where he grew up. The area is called Tsugaru, and it's useful to know something about it to understand Dazai. One way to do that is to read this book called Return to Tsugaru, which was written in 1944. Let's find out a little bit more about the book now. Return to Tsugaru is a travelogue describing three weeks that Dazai spent visiting friends and acquaintances in the place where he was born. At 
At the age of 35, Dazai left Tokyo from Ueno Station and headed by train to his hometown. Ten years had passed since his last visit. The year was 1944. The Japanese military was losing island after island in the Pacific War. The fighting was fast approaching Japan's main islands. Despite these circumstances, Dazai set out on his journey, leaving his pregnant wife behind in Tokyo. Why must you go? Because it's all too much. War put everyone's life in danger. Dazai began to reflect on his own life of 35 years. His return home was an attempt to understand his existence. May, late spring in Tsugaru. One day, Dazai goes out for a picnic in the mountains with a few family servants. Look, it's Mount Fuji! Dazai is talking about Mount Iwaki, the Mount Fuji of Tsugaru. The scenery that Dazai had grown so used to as a child now seems completely new to him. All around him is a treasure trove of local greenery. Bracken, leafy vegetables, bamboo sprouts and thistles. Dazai and the other picnickers become lost in the beauty of the mountain flora. Pops, you seem so happy. I am. Down below is the Tsugaru Plain, a patchwork of flooded rice paddies. This harmonious moment shared with his family servants helps to lighten Dazai's heavy heart. As his journey continues, Dazai receives a warm welcome from many childhood friends. One friend greets Dazai with a feast of crabs, one of Tsugaru's local specialities, dried cod chilled by the cool mountain air, sake, beer and cider. Entertains him with his record collection, Bach, Chopin and Schubert. And when Dazai is about to leave, the friend tries to send him off with all the sugar there is in the house. But Dazai politely refuses and goes on his way. He is moved by the unstinting generosity of the Tsugaru locals. Their warmth stands in contrast to the harsh natural environment in which they live. His journey continues with the hope that in these people he might find the will to live. His journey comes to an end at Kodomari, a small fishing village. Dazai has come to meet Take, the woman who took care of him in place of his busy father and sickly mother. Their last meeting was 27 years ago, when Dazai was only eight years old. I'm Shuji, I smiled and took off my cap. Never! That was all she said. She did not even smile. She looked grave. What a long time it's been. At first, I didn't understand. For almost 30 years, I've been wanting to meet you again. And all those years, I was thinking, shall I be able to see him again or not? And then to think you've grown up to be such a fine, big man. Do you have any children? How many children? A boy or a girl? How old? When I saw how strongly and freely she showed her affection, I realized how like her I am. It dawned on me that it is as a result of her influence, of the influence of this dear foster mother, that I alone of all my brothers and sisters have such a rustic, such an uncouth side to my character. I am Take's child. Even if that means I am the child of a maid or whatever, I don't care. I'll say it out loud, I am Take's child. In return to Tsugaru, Dazai writes frankly of the simple warmth of the people he encountered in the Tsugaru region.
This is the Dazai Osama Literary Salon, also in Mitaka. It was opened in 2008, which was the 60th anniversary of Dazai's death and just coming up to the 100th anniversary of his birth. Let's take a look inside. On this wall here, we have a panel showing some of the details of Dazai's life. Then on the opposite wall, some pictures here of Dazai walking around the area. This is a facsimile of the opening part of his most famous novel, No Longer Human. This was written in 1948, four years after Return to Tsugaru. And the warmth and positivity that we saw in the earlier book is now gone. It's three years after Japan's defeat at the end of the Second World War. And Dazai is back on the path towards self-destruction. Let's take a look now in some more detail at the background behind that book. No Longer Human begins with these words. I've lived a life of shame. This was Dazai's final complete novel. Some see it as a kind of last will and testament. It was written in 1948, during the confusion of Japan's post-war years. The work depicts the diary of Yozo Oba. Crushed by feelings of inferiority and alienation, Oba loses himself in alcohol and drugs. He's even willing to cheat people out of money to fuel this lifestyle. Despite deeply regretting his actions, Oba never manages to set himself straight. Through the course of writing No Longer Human, Dazai's own life also underwent radical changes. At the time, Dazai had children and was living a happy life with his family. But he turned his back on that life for the sake of his novel. Abandoning his family, Dazai began keeping a separate residence for work and a mistress. Dazai's life of stability had collapsed. He drank heavily every night, undermining his health. And even as he coughed up blood, he forced himself to write on. Dazai had convinced himself that in order to write about the sins of man, he needed to throw away his life of happiness. All the while, his wife Michiko battled to come to terms with his self-destructive approach to writing. She understood that he was putting his life into his work. This is the 157-page rough draft of No Longer Human. In these pages, you can see the passion that drove Dazai's work. There are several sections crossed out with large X's. Dazai was particular about each and every word. Here, he started out with the word for affection, but then crossed that out and wrote thoughtfulness. He finally chose devoted service. Dazai also left behind pages of notes filled with frenzied scribbling. Perhaps he was rushing to jot down some idea that had popped into his head. The manuscript also has three pages that bear the same page number, but contain different words. Looking at these pages, you can see Dazai's struggle as he wrote and rewrote aiming not simply to recount his experiences, but to deliver a mature work of literary importance. The second half of the novel follows the protagonist as he enters a sanatorium after a mental breakdown. I pose this question to God, is it a sin not to resist? Even if I were to get out of this place, would I not still be a madman? No, not mad, but branded with the mark, reject. The character then goes on to brand himself with these words. No longer human. But Dazai does not share the character's self-assessment. At the end of the novel, a woman who runs a bar frequented by Oba speaks of him in the following way. The Oba that I once knew was honest and thoughtful. 
If only he hadn't turned to alcohol. But actually, even in spite of the alcohol, he was like a divine child. In No Longer Human, Dazai seems to be saying that recognition of one's own faults opens the door to true love and self-improvement. This is the spot where Dazai died in a double suicide with his lover just one month after the publication of No Longer Human. In his suicide note, he said, I choose to die because I can no longer find the motivation to write. And many people reading No Longer Human in the years after his death have commented that the book itself reads almost like a suicide note. Here we have a number of all current editions of No Longer Human. It's out of copyright now, so any publisher can put it out at will. But if you look at the designs of all these different editions, you can see that they're trying to appeal to a young audience. Even now, over 60 years after Dazai's death, his popularity remains very high with the young. Let's take a look at why. Osamu Dazai continues to find new readers among those under 30. Each year on June the 19th, on Dazai's birthday, a ceremony is held in his honour. It draws crowds of young people to Dazai's grave. He doesn't seem like some distant genius. He feels very relevant to me. When I feel sad or lonely, I read his stuff. Then I feel less alone. But why are today's young people so drawn to Dazai's works? Koji Kusaka only used to read manga, but today he counts himself among the ranks of die-hard Dazai fans. Over the past two years, Kusaka put girls and hobbies aside in order to read all of Dazai's works. Now, he says, he can't imagine life without Dazai. When I read Dazai, it really feels like he's right beside me. No matter what work I read, it's like having a conversation with him. One of the reasons for Dazai's popularity is his use of prose. It's easy to get lost in his words. Schoolgirl was published in 1939. Written in diary form, the story follows a young girl through the course of a single day. Waking up in the morning is such a funny feeling. People talk about suddenly coming awake their eyes popping open, but that's a lie. It's like the top layer of some cloudy, cloudy liquid that slowly begins to clear as the particles of starch or whatever settle to the bottom, until finally you open your eyes, exhausted. On the seat across from me are four or five office workers, all about the same age, all with the same vacant expressions. Around 30 years old, I'd say. They are awful, all of them. Their eyes are dull and cloudy. They have no spirit. If I were to smile at one of them, however, that might be all it would take. He might latch onto me and whisk me away, and I'd end up having to marry him. One little smile is enough to decide a woman's fate. I'll have to watch my step. Ichi Hanzawa is a university professor who studies the expressive use of Japanese. He's found a similarity between Dazai's work and contemporary blogs written by young people. These are public diaries uh, written as a kind of confession. Dazai was experimenting with this writing style about 70 years ago. For that reason, I think Dazai's works are easier for today's young people to get into than they were for readers in the old days. Other researchers theorize that the recent Dazai boom among young people has resulted from social changes. Takumi Ishikawa is a professor of modern Japanese literature. His attention was drawn to a national book review contest for junior and senior high school students. According to Ishikawa, the number of submissions about No Longer Human is extremely high. Here's a graph showing his data. The number of submissions increases as Japan enters a period of rapid economic growth, 
then again, just before the economic bubble bursts in the early 1990s, and then shoots up again recently. Ishikawa suggests that readership of No Longer Human is related to social anxiety caused by major economic changes. People today are pressured into adapting to societal demands. In a sense, we're expected to exhibit an inordinate ability to adapt. Today's high school students who are psychologically affected by this find resonance between their own feelings and those depicted in No Longer Human. This is Tomona Haraichi. Her submission won the National Book Review competition. She compared her own insecurities about the future with the protagonist's struggle to understand human behavior. It feels like Dazai is there with you, working through the same problems. But what really stunned me was to realize that even mature adults worry about the same things as me. Osamu Dazai constantly struggled with life and its meaning. Even today, his words resonate in the hearts of young readers. With the Japanese economy still in a deep slump, in many ways life is tough for young people and it's easy to imagine how they would find a certain comfort from reading the works of Dazai. At the same time, I'm sure his books offer a lot of lessons in how not to live your life as well. I'm going to leave you today with a short quote from his book, Return to Tsugaru. Many things remain that I would like to write about, but I feel that in these pages I have more or less said all I could about the spirit of Tsugaru. I did not exaggerate, I did not deceive my readers. Well then, reader, let us meet again if we live. Let us keep our spirits up. Do not despair. Goodbye. I will see you again next time. Next time, the life of Kenzo Tange, who designed a series of buildings that defined an era. We'll explore the life and work of this iconic architect.